What's going on, ladies? And more importantly, gentlemen, it's your boy, full-time MMA, and I'm here to give my predictions for UFC 266. It's going down this Saturday, September 25th, and it's going to be headlined by Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega. We got two title fights going down. We've also got Valentina Shevchenko versus Lauren Murphy. And then, of course, the return of two legends, Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler going down. But we've got more. Don't forget, we've got some heavyweight action going down. Curtis Blades versus Jarzinho Rosenstruck. And then former champion Jessica Andrade taking on Cynthia Calvillo. It is still a pretty lackluster card, given that introduction. I'm not going to cap because, honestly, whoo, damn. I feel like I just gave that a hell of an introduction for what I'm about to do to this card. <laughs> Hire me, UFC, and now just like everything I'm about to say after this, I would not say. I would just give that shit hot introductions, pump that shit up, and zip my lips. <laughs> But no, guys, I'm about to give you my honest opinion on this card and my predictions. Um, shout out to my boy, Mike Dang. I'm also going to talk about Vitor Belfort versus Evander Holyfield. But I'm going to save that for the end of the video because he asked me to talk about that. Um, so I'm going to do that because it was a request. I know I've been gone for a long time. But like I said, I've got a full-time job and I've started a business. I'm, I've been working 12 to 14 hours some days, 12 hours most days, 14 hours some I, I'm just extremely busy, extremely busy. I am mean, you know, I'm bought a car, I, I, all type of shit going on. So, um, not, no time for YouTube. It's with the shadow ban. It just doesn't make sense for me to continue to do right now. So that's where we are. But if somebody requests a video, then I'm going to do it. So if you guys want to see me cover any sort of, sort of topic, shoot me a comment, shoot me an email and let me know. And I'll cover that for you. Now, with that being said, let's get into our predictions for UFC 266. We're going to start with the main event. <clears throat> Honestly, bro, I really feel like Ortega, Ortega is about to pull off some comeback shenanigans. Like, I really want to pick Ortega for the simple fact the odds don't make any sense. That's part of the reason. But <clears throat> honestly, Brian Ortega, bro, I would completely be counting him out if he had not knocked out Frankie Edgar. That showed us he's not just a come from behind, get your ass beat, pull off a submission fighter. Because that's honestly the story of a lot of Brian Ortega's career. Get his ass beat rounds one through three, and then pull off a miracle submission, comeback submission, on some Anderson Silva, Chell Sun and one shit. Th that's what Brian Ortega does. He loses the fight to fighters that are not even contenders. And then he come that that that's how he got to becoming a contender. He went on a huge win streak, but he was losing almost all of those fights. He the only fight he was not losing technically that he didn't pull off a submission was when he knocked out Frankie Edgar, which made him le as legit as they come. Um, so with that being said, Brian Ortega's obviously got knockout power. He can knock guys out. But his his bread and butter is his jujitsu, so he's also he's got a puncher's chance and a submitter's chance. I don't know if he's going to win the fight. You know, it he's got to pull off the finish. I don't see Brian Ortega winning a decision. I think Volkanovski's probably got more paths to victory for that reason. Um, I don't really know if I see Volkanovski submitting him, but he can grapple. I, the odds on this fight are like a pick 'em. Volkanovski's a slight favorite. I honestly expected him to be like a two to one, three to one favorite. So Volkanovski's got a, a he's alive. He's got a real chance in this fight. I mean Ortega does, and I didn't see myself giving him that much of a chance when I initially went to do my predictions. I was like, this fight card sucks. Volkanovski's gonna win. Shevchenko's gonna win. Lawler needs a check. We got some heavyweights, and then we got some fucking more WMMA filler. You guys know what WMMA is like? WMMA is like Reggie. WMMA is like Reggie or mid-grade. And men's MMA is like, you know, the finest kush. You know what I'm saying? That za, whatever whatever you're smoking. That's, that's what it's like. 
Now, now look, I used to sell weed. Let me tell you why I'm why I'm where I'm coming from. So if you get like this was years ago, 18 years old, fresh out of high school, over 10 years ago. <laughs> um, so if you get some really bad weed that you don't even want to sell because it's so fucking trash, you don't want to run your customers away. And so you just hold on to it like, fuck it, I'm going to take a loss. But then you get some really, really, really fucking good weed that you're like, holy shit, this shit is way better than average. What you do is you will mix the really bad weed with the really good weed, like grind it up, mix it together. That way, when they smoke it, it's like filler. So that way you can still get rid of your bad weed. You can still sell it. But you've got to mix it with the good weed. And that's what WMMA is. If there was... It, nobody watches the WNBA. Nobody watches the WNFL. It doesn't even exist. Women's sports really don't get watched unless they got ass and titties hanging out. Like women's softball, volleyball, just bad bitches. And work. You know, that that's really the only sports that men tend to watch when it comes to females. But what the UFC's fucking geniuses have done is they got them filler bags on us, bro. It's very rare that you find WMMA fights that were like, on average, that were like really worth that $60 pay-per-view money that you spend when they throw them on these pay-per-views. We've got Marlon Moraes versus Volkanovski on the undercard. That could easily be on the pay-per-view. Now, we get it for free. I'm not complaining about that. But I'm just saying, when you're spending your $60 to have two WMMA fights, I get it. One of them's a title fight. But everybody knows Valentina Shevchenko's about to beat this girl's head in, bro. Come on. That's not. That's like a gimme. Come on. And Draj is a former champion. But you get the point, bro. Like, these are... Might go to decision, and if not, then we might get like a TKO. Not excited. I'm not super excited. Unless it's a super compelling matchup that's like even Andrade versus Calvillo. Calvillo doesn't stand much of a chance against Andrade. What you going to do? Maybe pull off a submission? Like Andrade is a championship level fighter with over 20 fights in the UFC at three different weight classes. Calvillo's not sniffing her fucking panty line. Speaking of, did you guys see Jessica Andrade's new OnlyFans leaked? I seen that. It was very interesting. I didn't know what to think. I don't still kind of know what to think because she's got a. This is YouTube. <laughs> This is YouTube. I got to keep it PG. I just don't know what to think. <laughs> you can go Google it for yourself. If I was fucking drunk, bro, I would smash. <laughs> but I'm not drunk right now, so I don't know what to think. <laughs> Awkward. All right, let's start with our prediction. So I'm going with Volkanovski. But I've got a weird feeling about this one. I've got a weird feeling about this one. Ooh, that's crazy. Ortega's got a chance, but I'm going with Volkanovski. Shevchenko, don't need to talk about it much. This is the bad weed you pull out when you really don't want to share your good weed. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> fine. This is that filler weed. But I'm taking Shevchenko. I think everybody and their mom is. We're not going to spend too much time on that. She's going to beat her ass. How's she going to beat her? Is she going to finish her? Is she going to head kick her? Is she going to power bomb her? Is she going to climb on the cage and fucking get climb over the cage, get her belt, or steel chair, bring it in? That's how Lauren Murphy's going to have to win. She's going to have to climb over the cage and get like a steel chair, bring it in, and fucking crack this chick like WWE. It's going to be the only way. Now, Diaz versus Lawler. This is a fight that, boy, is it fucking... And it's not Nick Diaz's fault. Fuck, man. Fuck the UFC. Fuck you, Shada. Anybody involved with that Nick Diaz suspension is a fucking complete piece of dog shit. Seriously. Nick Diaz is a fucking UFC MMA. Not UFC. MMA in general. Just a fucking legend, bro. 
before Nate Diaz was anything, it was Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz was the good Diaz brother. He was fighting legends. Nate Diaz was getting slammed on his head, taking the suplex city by Rory McDonald, thrown around the undercards. Nick Diaz was that nigga. No pun intended. He got a five-year suspension for marijuana while guys are getting fucking slaps on the wrist for steroids. Passing steroid tests. Niggas are getting called out and snitched on in public. TJ Dillashaw was on EPO. He don't get caught till like a year later. But Nick Diaz gets suspended for five fucking years. A legend for marijuana. Fuck whoever was involved with that. That's dog shit. That's bullshit. And sort of takes away from this fight. We lost six years of Nick Diaz. He hasn't fought since 2015. Robbie Lawler's on a four-fight losing streak. This is, you know, Robbie Lawler. He's also a legend. Former UFC welterweight champion, strike force. Just another legend. This, this matchup is amazing, but the problem is the timing, the years away, the break for both of these guys is both of their return. This is like some shit that you really should be seeing on Bellator. You know what I'm saying? This is a big money Bellator fight right here. Two guys, almost 40 years old, way, you know, past their prime, removed from the sport. Bellator trying to get some track. This is should be a Bellator fight. These guys are both not serious contenders. Nick Diaz can actually get some big fights here, though. If Nick Diaz can get a win, I mean, he's got Masvidal on the line. Nick Diaz can still get some big fights if he gets a W. Just from the Diaz name, Nate putting in that work while he was gone. Robbie Lawler, though? This dude just coming off, he's on a four-fight losing streak, most recently losing to Neil Magny. I think a unanimous decision. I mean, Lawler's got a chance, but I really feel like Lawler's probably taking this fight for the check. He ain't got a little brother that's been fighting Conor McGregor and Jorge fucking Masvidal and, you know what I'm saying? Main event and pay-per-views, millions of buys. Nick Diaz... Probably isn't fighting for the money because he can live off a little brother's money. He probably don't want to. Well, probably want some of his own money. But I feel like Lawler's probably coming back for a check. He's 39, four fight losing streak. He win this fight and then what? Go bare knuckle box Tyron Woodley. I have no idea what what you know what I'm saying. So I'm I'm picking Nick Diaz with my heart and my head. I mean I feel like he's probably better than Neil Magny. I don't know with how long he's been away, though. That's kind of disrespectful to kind of pick him to beat an active fighter. But Robbie hasn't been active either. Four fight losing streak. We don't know what he's got. So I'm just picking Nick Diaz. You know what I'm saying? I think I think he uh, has at least been getting some work with Nate Diaz. And Nate Diaz is training partners in the meantime, in between time. One of the other things against Nick Diaz, though, I mean, in his absence, there's been rumored alleged drug use to the point where one of his coaches came out and spoke against him like bro you got to stop this party life the drugs and alcohol are not good for you type shit like allegedly so Nick Diaz but that I'm hoping that's just something that he he you know he's he's obviously got amazing discipline so I'm sure that's something, you know, guys with guys with discipline like these MMA fighters and shit, I've never had that fucking much amazing discipline like that Joe Rogan type shit where you can just cut on and off smoking and shit whenever you want. Oh, I'm not eating that today. Like, I'm getting better at it now, but these MMA fighters obviously are extremely disciplined. So I'm assuming Nick Diaz can get that type of shit under control and it's not that big of a deal. It's just something that's in the back of my mind. So I'm picking Nick Diaz to win, beat Robbie Lawler. That's what I'll be hoping for. And then we got Curtis Blades versus Jarzinho Rosenstruck. 
I'm taking Curtis Blades in this one. Rosenstrug had a couple of big moments, but Curtis Blades, I mean, he's got set back in a major way, but this dude, there's no reason he's not going to be the UFC heavyweight champion in the future. He's still young, fucking dangerous. He's been training striking with Overeem. He was already one of the best wrestlers in the division. I believe he's a division one wrestler in the heavyweight division at his young age. He's still got so much time to grow, so much potential. He's been in there with killers already. Curtis Blades is a fucking monster and one of my favorite heavyweights, and I'm picking him to win. You're going to have to knock him out early. You're, you're going to need a puncher's chance, really, to beat Curtis Blades. You're going to have to knock him out. You're not going to out-wrestle him. You're probably not going to out-cardio him. He's a wrestler that, you know, chain, he'll chain wrestle, keep you down. He's going to grind you out. You're going to have to knock Curtis Blades out, and if you knock him out, more power to you. But you're going to have to do it. I'm taking Curtis Blades. Andrade, OnlyFans, Andrade versus Calvillo. I wish had an OnlyFans, Calvillo. <laughs> I want to see Cynthia Calvillo's OnlyFans. I wouldn't be so, quite, you know, like torn on hers. Um, I'm picking Jessica Andrade, former champion. I talked about it earlier. Through across three weight classes, uh, just a uh, Jessica Andrade, Bate Esteca, she pile driver. She's known for slamming bitches. She, she might slam Cynthia Calvillo. I think she needs a slam. I think she's looking for another slam in this one. So I think Jessica Andrade is probably going to slam Cynthia Calvillo on her head. She's just got way too much experience, um, can championship level experience. And Calvillo just hasn't been fighting anyone on that level, never has. She can show us something, but I just don't think Cynthia Calvillo has shown us enough to prove she can beat a championship contender. And with that being said, those are my predictions. But wait, 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 there's more. Wait, wait, wait. We are going to talk about Vitor Belfort versus Evander Holyfield for my boy Mike Dang. Salute to Mike Dang. Um, that fight, bro, I am super glad TRT Vitor Belfort came back. And Holyfield, he's, you know what I'm saying? He might be doing the, the coming. He might have been fighting for a check, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. I'm glad MMA could come back and get that boxing W over a former boxing champion in huge name. Because Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley have been making us look like fucking clowns getting fucking smacked down by Jake Paul in, in boxing, losing to Jake Paul, like Duke Rufus, probably someone check on that guy, someone check on Duke Rufus, make sure he's okay, make sure he's well, someone needs to seriously be checking on Duke Rufus' well-being, I don't know why this hasn't been talked about yet, they need to check his mental health, make sure he's seeing somebody, because his fucking fighters between Tyron Woodley, Ben Askren, and CM Punk have all made Duke Rufus look like a fucking Roof Doofus, if you know what I'm saying. Roof Doofus. Um, unacceptable, unacceptable, and unacceptable. So I was glad to see Vitor Belfort knock, uh, knock out Evander Holyfield. I mean, I didn't... I, Evander Holyfield was beyond my years. I didn't grow up watching Evander Holyfield, so it's not like I seen one of my idols getting fucking knocked out. You know what I'm saying? I seen one of my idols doing the knocking out and also getting some get back on for uh Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley who made us look crazy. Nobody came out and said, Oh, Tyron Woodley's almost forty years old. That's why Jake Paul knocked him out. They didn't give him that age benefit of the doubt. That that was Holyfield's game. He knows all the rules of boxing. He definitely knows to protect himself at all times. And he got cleaned up. So um, I was happy to see it. You know, you love to see it. You know what they say. So that's my thoughts on Holyfield versus Belfort. And then Silva versus Ortiz. Oh, my God. You didn't even ask about that one. But that was amazing. But, I mean, Anderson Silva is already, we knew that was going to happen. He literally just be, uh, he's fighting boxers and winning. So Anderson Silva, he's got, he's got, some more fights coming, I'm sure. Boxing. He's going to be making a little bit of money. So, I don't know who he's going to fight, but there's a lot of options. I would love to see Anderson Silva fight. He could fight anybody. Like, obviously not some young Thundercat. He could fight Jake Paul or something. But, I mean, as far as, like, some Oscar De La Hoya type shit. You know, I think Vitor was supposed to fight Oscar. And, uh, yeah, Oscar had to pull out. So, uh. Oscar De La Hoya versus Anderson Silva. That'd be fucking sick. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 
that'd be dope. Love to see Anderson succeeding too. That's always been one of my favorite fighters. He's the Anderson Silva's the person that got me into MMA and UFC. He was, he was my first favorite fighter that I couldn't fucking believe what I was watching. Super entertaining. I loved it. It was fucking awesome. So good to see him doing well at this age and, and this point in his career. And with that being said, guys, like I said, if there's anything you want me to cover, request it. Other than that, I'm grinding, bro. I am grinding out here. And YouTube, I'm watching YouTube while I'm working. I'm listening to YouTube, but I don't got the time. It took me about three hours to make this video. And if I'm making $25 to $30 an hour, that's about $90 of my time and I'm probably not even getting nine dollars to make this video so this is like one tenth of it's just it's just especially being shadow banned bro it just doesn't make dollars so it doesn't make sense so I mean until I restart a channel which I don't have time to do at this point then I'm doing these by request so let me know what y'all want me to cover and with that being said it is what it is let the full time family know what you think in the comments I am out